Hi hey guys, this is Tavia Sobi and today... Today I am translating several interviews from Japanese gaming sites about Monster Hunter Stories 2. Yeah, so the last video I posted before this one was for an interview I did with Capcom producer Ryozo Tsujimoto about Monster Hunter Stories 2, so feel free to check that out if you haven't yet. Anyway, in that video, several folks in the comments mentioned that they'd definitely love to hear more info about the game, so I went ahead and scoured several Japanese gaming sites, such as Game Watch, for gamer and of course Japanese magazine Famitsu to see if Tsujimoto-san mentioned anything else about the game that perhaps we didn't get to during my interview with him. Now while these Japanese interviews touched on some of the same things that Tsujimoto-san and I talked about in our interview, just note that with Monster Hunter Stories 2 also being earlier in development compared to Rise, and by that I mean Monster Hunter Rise is supposed to be out in spring of 2021, while Stories 2 is looking at a summer release, anyway because of that, so Jumoto-san wasn't really sharing as much information about it when I talked to him, and it appears that was also the case with the Japanese game media. On that note, let's check out some of the Monster Hunter Stories 2 info from these Japanese interviews. Now one question that was asked was the reason behind the change in the art style, particularly as it applies to the character proportions. The first Stories game, for example, used a more kid-friendly art style with shorter proportions, while Stories 2 has taller looking characters as well as a more mature vibe to it. In response to that question, tsuchimoto san said that the look was something they definitely spent a lot of time on and that the changes were deliberate. In the case of Monster Hunter Stories 2, it was pretty much all about expanding the audience. tsuchimoto san says that they want the game to appeal to both kids as well as older players, and that was a big reason why they decided to go for the art style that you now see in Monster Hunter Stories 2. I mean, it still uses the same bright colors as the first game, but as far as character designs and proportions, it's obviously different. And I think this definitely makes a lot of sense, especially from a financial standpoint. I mean, one reason I was so happy to get a sequel to Monster Hunter Stories was because I actually was afraid that it wasn't going to happen. And the reason I say that was because Capcom itself said in a financial report in early 2017 that the first Monster Hunter Stories underperformed when it came to sales. The good news is that the release of the Monster Hunter Stories anime has apparently helped introduce the series to kids and family members who might not be as familiar with the Monster Hunter series before, according to Tsujimoto-san. Well, on top of that, I'm sure Tsujimoto-san is also getting extra benefit of the doubt right now from the higher-ups, given how the team was quite successful in making Monster Hunter World a global success. So I guess now it's time for the team to work its magic for Monster Hunter Stories as well. Now, there were also several questions about the story for Stories 2, no pun intended, and for the most part, Tsujimoto-san said that he really can't talk about it, which was the same thing he said during my interview with him. However, he did address a few story-related questions, which I will now go through here. One was whether the world of Stories 2 is the same one in either Monster Hunter World or Monster Hunter Rise. To that, Tsujimoto-san said that while there are some shared elements between Stories 2 and those games, such as having the same familiar monsters, for example, the setting is completely different. So basically, the world of Stories is its own separate thing. Tsujimoto-san was also asked whether Stories 2 has a direct connection with Monster Hunter Riders at all, and he answered once again that it does not, and that both are set in different worlds. I mean, honestly, it's probably a good thing <laughs> that Monster Hunter Stories 2 has no connection to Riders, and I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek. I mean, Monster Hunter Riders disappointed me on so many levels, and the fact that it was not Monster Hunter Stories 2 probably also made me extra salty about it when it first came out. Yeah, I remember I was like, why are they doing this when they could have just made Monster Hunter Stories 2 instead? <laughs> Tsuchimoto-san also answered a question about the legendary hero Red, who is the ancestor of the protagonist for Monster Hunter Stories 2. The question was basically about the appearance of a younger version of Red in the promotional video, and whether he was actually playable during flashback scenes. To that, Tsuchimoto-san said that the setting for Stories 2 is in the present during the new protagonist's timeline, and that Red would indeed appear during flashbacks. He also added that Red would play an active role in those flashback scenes, so it sounds like he might be playable, though I'm not quite sure since my Japanese is like super rusty. Yeah, like an old army truck in the junkyard. <laughs> Naturally, one of the questions was whether characters from the first game will make an appearance in Stories 2. This was actually asked in different interviews, and tsujimoto san pretty much responded in one interview by saying, please wait for future announcements. <laughs> And then in one of the other interviews, tsujimoto san was also asked specifically if the chubby cat Navero will actually show up in the sequel as well. And to that, tsujimoto san smiled and then responded, Soko wa naiso desu. <laughs> Which pretty much means that's a secret. So based on how he's answered other questions, I mean, he could have very well just said no, 
but the fact that he was non-committal in a playful way makes me think that perhaps Navarro or some version of the character will make an appearance. I guess we shall see. Seriously though, like in a lot of these interviews, you can kind of see when he sort of stops himself from answering a question that could reveal more than they want to. But at the same time, he looks like he so very much wants to say something. <laughs> like he's holding back on something cool and he just can't wait to talk about it. Anyway, let's just hope that that's a good sign. Also, one of the interviewers mentioned how Rathalo seems to be playing a key role once again in the sequel's story and wondered why that was the case. So for folks who have seen the trailer, you'll notice that a Rathalos egg not only gets featured in the story once again, but there's also an extra element about how Rathalos are disappearing from the world. I mean, there's probably a joke here somewhere about how many Rathalos have been taken down by Monster Hunter players over the years. <laughs> I mean, I myself have hunted a gaggle of these poor monsters, which I now feel incredibly guilty about. Kind of like how guilty I felt going back to a regular Monster Hunter after playing Monster Hunter stories. Because, <laughs> you know, I developed such a bond with these monsters and then here I am, like, hunting them again. So, yep, sensitive guy right here. <laughs> I mean, hey, the world would certainly be a much better place if everybody just had a little bit more empathy, right? Anyway, tsuchimoto sans response was that it was only natural for Rathalos to play a key role in the story because it is the flagship monster or main mascot of the entire Monster Hunter series. So as a longtime player of Monster Hunter, it always warms my heart every time I hear Rathalos described as the flagship monster of the series. Because, you know, you got all these other super strong monsters and elders. And despite all that, Rathalos remains like the number one mascot or flagship, which just feels right, especially if you've played the series for a long time. Also, speaking of monsters, tsuchimoto san was asked if any of the new monsters from Monster Hunter Rise will also show up in Monster Hunter Stories 2. To that, tsuchimoto san replied once again that he can't talk about it yet. But, you know, I mean, honestly... <laughs> That kind of sounds like a half confirmation right there since he isn't denying it outright, so we'll see. As in previous talks about the game, tsujimoto san also added that they are definitely working on tie-ins between both games, so players who play both Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2 will be able to receive some quote-unquote good stuff. <laughs> yeah, give me the good stuff, tsujimoto san <laughs> I want them all. To quote the philosopher Gordon Gecko. Greed is good. In fact, I still remember getting a kick from acquiring the Navro skin for my Palico in Monster Hunter Double Cross, so I'm already looking forward to this good stuff that tsujimoto san is talking about. tsujimoto san was also asked about the monster count for this game, and he surprisingly answered the question, like sort of. And I say surprisingly because he's known to not answer that question when it comes to the mainline Monster Hunter games. I mean, I myself asked it during my interview with him, and he pretty much declined to talk about it saying that Monster Count is really not something they think about when they're creating a new Monster Hunter game. So yeah, I was surprised when he answered this question. So in the case of Monster Hunter Stories 2, tsujimoto san said that the first Stories game featured a large number of monsters and that the sequel will add even more. So yeah, that's like good news for fans of the game. It's like more metabots, more power. Except here we've got more monsters. And then as far as character creation, tsujimoto san said that players will be able to pick between a male and female character once again, as well as change their character's uh, skin color. It'll definitely be interesting to see if we get more options from a character creation standpoint. And then in one interview, someone asked about the combat system, and if any changes will be made to the random nature of monsty attacks, and how your monster friends sometimes don't pick the most effective attacks. And then to that, tsujimoto san responded that they will share more information about the combat at a later date. By the way, in my interview, tsujimoto san confirmed that the game will still be using the rock-paper-scissors mechanic from the first game, but he also added that they are keeping the elements that fans liked from the first game, while also fine-tuning and making changes to the parts that weren't as popular. So I'll be interested to see how the new combat system plays out. One of the interviewers also asked if Stories 2 will have a versus feature like the first game, as well as some wireless mode. And then to that, tsujimoto san responded once again that there will be more announcements in the future. Anyway, there you go. More information about Monster Hunter Stories 2 from interviews by Japanese media outlets. So what do you think about the details released about the game so far? As always, feel free to leave any thoughts or questions you may have in the comment section. Once again, this is Tabi Asobi, and thank you for watching.